This is Public Resource. First meeting of the Code Improvement Commission will come to order. Uh, I'm hoping we can meet uh, possibly even on a monthly basis, uh, but certainly on a quarterly basis. And the idea is that we can begin working together and trying to understand how to make not only the regulations uh, more broadly available, but also uh, related items such as the codes. So we have Unicord here to talk about the work they're doing on the legislative codes. And so let me turn it over to you, Christina, if you could give us you know five minutes 10 minutes max uh about what it is you're doing here um and you know any issues you see and if you have a roadmap as to changes you you think you're going to be making so let me turn it over to you okay. great hi everyone um nice to meet you and you jack here from fast case um just a quick um introduction of who's with me um from fast case we have ed walters who is our um ceo um, Sean Tate, who is our product manager for data feeds and um, APIs, and um, Rachel Johns, who is on Sean's product team, does a lot of our, um, our data analysis. So um, very briefly, um, Carl, let me know if I'm, if I'm going too basic here. I'm not sure what folks know about the relationship between PRO and FastCase, um, but we um, have a data feed of our, um, of our statutes and our, um, our regulations relations that a number of um, companies consume and the team um, at PRO consumes 50 of our regulations. Um, we are really excited to be partnered with you guys. Um, the updates are quarterly, so um, they're lagging a little bit um, on the timeline of what's available um, on our um, on our website. Um, and now um, we announced this morning that we are merging with um, Casemaker. And so that is um, a little bit of a change to the roadmap that I'm really excited to be able to talk about um, a little bit today as well. Um, the first delivery that we made was last year. Um, and it was um, 50 codes and regs to um, PRO, which the teams at Justia um, and others kind of massaged and, um, and posted on their websites. And we had um, a lot of good back and forth about how we could um, improve those deliveries, which um, we can talk about here if you'd like, Carl, or we can you know talk about it offline. Um, but in in short, we got um, really great, um, nicely um, curated updates on um, on how the um, content met the requirements um, and where we could um, make some changes. So we made the first round of changes for um, the last delivery, and then um, we have some plans to make additional changes um, on the um, Q1 delivery, which will be um, packaging up and sending over in the next couple of weeks. Um, so I'll just pause there for a second um, to see if there are any questions about the relationship um, or you know the delivery so far, and then we can talk a little bit about our roadmap with Casemaker. No, I don't think we have any questions. Uh, you could, uh, so what, what kinds of uh, changes shall we be expecting for the January um, release, the, the Q4 2020? Yeah, definitely. So um, nothing substantive, um, really just um, upgrades on the content that we've sent to correct some of the issues that's been pointed out by the Justia team. Um, so we can go into more detail if you'd like, otherwise I can give you just kind of a high level um, look at some of the issues that, um, that we've seen come across. Um, and, and how we're planning on fixing them. Um, and then I can talk a little bit about how the relationship with um, Casemaker won't um, and will change um, the way that we're working together. Yeah, high level would be good. We can go in detail by email and things like that, but just, you know, high level of, you know, we're fixing broken images or things like that would be good. And briefly on, on the effects of the Casemaker would be good. Yeah, totally, totally. Okay, so um, the we categorized the issues into um, into three major major problems that were occurring, and then there are two sub issues under um, missing Im the images issue. Um, so there are content issues, um, annotations issues, and then images issues. Um, I'll start with annotations because that's the the cleanest wrap up that we have. Um, the team at Justia identified. Um, a pattern that we hadn't uncovered um, that basically caused um, our conversion to break, um, which we've which we fixed at the root, um, like where we 
um, collect the content and um, translate it into fast case XML, which is the normalized XML that we deliver to PRO. Um, and so that problem should not occur in any future deliveries. So um, thanks to the team at Justia, um, you guys made our platform better too. Um, on, the, um, on the content side, um, there are a number of issues that um, we're working on um, that frankly our, our QA should have caught. Um, there was some kind of like, uh, there was an OCR error in there. Um, there was like a bold tag that was missing. And so um, our, we're working on our processes to um, better capture that information. Um, and I'll talk to you guys um, a little bit more about that when we move into talking about, you know, how the, um, how the case maker team will be working with us to, um, you know, better capture that information and, and better QA and editorial resources in the future. Um, and then the final issue was um, missing images. So there were um, two categories, well, all right, so <laughs> there are two categories under images. There were missing images. Um, and so some of those images are missing at the source. Um, we're obviously not able to um, fix that. We deliver what's at the source. Um, and so sometimes the source will say like, we have an image here um, and then won't actually include that image. Um, and so, you know, that's a problem that's replicated in our files on FastCase and then replicated on PRO. Um, the other issue with images is um, linking to um, HTML files at the source. Um, and there were a couple of examples that the QA team uncovered at PRO that FastCase wasn't handling co correctly in the feed. Um, and we've figured out how to fix that issue. Um, which is just, you know, handling the, the link to um, that external file um, better than we've been handling it before. So that should not be an issue in the future as well. The um, other class of issues is um, missing, missing images that were available at the source. Um, and we are, um, we're working on collecting those images and figuring out why they're missing. Um, just to be honest with, with everyone on the team, we're, we're having a hard time figuring out, like we, when we see an issue like this that our QA didn't catch and that our um, process didn't catch, we go through a root cause analysis and we still haven't figured out why the, um, the process that we use to pull those images and then store them in a separate file isn't collecting them. Um, you know, short of checking every single folder and every single um, file, um, we're not quite sure how we're going to correct that yet without moving over to the case maker process. Um, and so that's one that, um, that we'll just do more QA on when we send the files over to you guys. Um, and um, we'll let you know, you know, as we, as we keep the, um, the changes there coming. Uh, can you at some point send me a list of uh, a few examples of missing images at the source so I can do a little bit of research on that and see what's going on? Um, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love okay, to. Great. Okay, then briefly, the, the case maker issue, what, what's, what's up with that? Yeah, it's so exciting. So um, we announced this morning that um, the fast case team is, is merging with the case maker team which is, um, it's, it's been a long time in the making. I think um, the conversations have been going on since um, 2019. Um, it, we're just really nicely complementary um, companies with complement, complementary um, strengths that have the same mission to you know, bring access to the law to, to everybody. Um, the Casemaker team, I think the most relevant part for this group is that the Casemaker team has extremely strong um, editorial processes, especially on the statute and regulation side, um, which we're very excited to integrate into our platform. Um, and I'll just, I'll just give you a process example for, for those of you who are interested. Um, the, uh, and I'll use the Illinois statutes as an example. Um, the way that FastCase collects updates for the Illinois statutes is that we go to the um, we go to the page with the um, all of the public acts, and we collect all of the public acts that were passed yesterday. You know, the, during the previous day, um, we download those, um, have little XML files that are converted from the source. And then we append those updates to the current version of the code so that, um, so that you can see you know, what the code looked like yesterday, what it looked like today. Um, it's a great solution for transparency. Um, the problem is that um, 
every state handles the way that they release their public acts or their, you know, in the case of regulations, rulemakings differently. So it's not a uniform experience across um, all libraries. And, you know, as, as we're moving um, into additional um, markets, we're learning that that uniform experience is something that lawyers truly do um, expect along with the kind of transparency that's really important to us to provide. So, you know, not only do they want to be able to dig in and see what did the legislature say here and then how did, um, and, and then how does it affect this code? They also want to be able to read, you know, the output and then work backwards. And so that's the capability that um, that case maker brings to us to be able to normalize those updates across all libraries. Um, and also for our data fee partners, and I think importantly for you guys, to be able to merge all of those updates um, into one file, which means that we could theoretically um, deliver um, updated files more often without the amount of, of work and QA that we're having to do right now. Okay. Carl, if, um, I, if I might be able to add just a, a macro point on this, um, this the, the combination of fast case and case maker won't affect uh, our feed, our arrangement, our relationship um, in any way. And uh, I think Nina made that very clear. I also would like to say uh, inside the family here, um, but not for kind of publication outside. We are-, yeah, we're, we are Ed, of, Ed, 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 we're recording this and we may be releasing this material. I'm more than happy to go offline with you later. Um, yeah. But if, if, if well, there's something that. you don't want public, you probably shouldn't be saying it here. Um. Well, no, I'll say it, I'll say it uh, here and for the public. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, inside the family here, the 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 commitment to uh, public law, to making public law public, doesn't change one iota. You're going to see that same uh, ethos in the combined fast case and case maker as you did in fast case before. And I think as you as you did often in case maker before too. <clears throat> I think um, you know, for the for the purposes of the code commission. You're going to see, uh, you know, a very strong commitment from the combined group to uh, public law. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, why don't we move on then to uh, Justia? Uh, so we have currently two downstream providers. Um, the feed comes in, and frankly, public resources not even downloading the feed. It's simply up on a Dropbox area. Uh, both Justia and Cornell are ingesting that and have stood them up as websites. So if we could start with Justia, and you could give us a, a, a quick overview of what you've done, uh, if you have a roadmap going forward, if you have particular issues that you're worrying about. So uh, turn it yeah. over to you. Sure. Uh, and uh, first of all, congratulations, Ed and uh, Fasca's team on the, you know, the merger that happened. So we were just uh, like in you know, reading Ambroji's blog and like, you know, so congratulations on that one. Uh, thank and you. also uh, thank you to Carl and Farsky's team for giving us the, you know, regulations. So we're putting it up. Obviously it adds to our collection of like in you know, the data. Uh, we're all about free law. So this is like, you know, obviously, uh, complementing whatever we already have uh, out there. So thank you before we go on to, you know, talking about things. Uh, and also from Just Your Team, we have Tim Stanley. Uh, nobody needs introduction to who Tim is. Uh, and uh, also have Dan. Uh, he is Director of uh, Engineering and uh, he actually has more technical details if anybody later on interested for off offline discussions. So he kind of oversaw the whole uh, thing. So our uh, summary should be uh, super quick. Uh, the first version obviously was for us to see how the data was, uh, to understand what you are getting, all of the details, and uh, you know, figure out how quickly we can put it up and uh, you know, make it available. So we pretty much focused on understanding the data, what we're getting, and uh, all of those things. Uh, and the second round quarterly update again was more focused on how is the update going to uh, be on our end, more figuring out the technical details, right? So like, you know, you have your first version up. So when you get the updates, what is it that we're going to be doing? Like 
in theory, yes, it's all should be simple, but not necessarily when you want to think about like, you know, the number of files coming in and the images and uh, all of those things. So are we able to quickly put it up, right? So our goal for the next, at least the next two quarterly updates is to make the process smooth. So where we can take the data process and, you know, make this in a well-oiled machine uh, to say. So that's our uh, like in a roadmap for the next two quarterly release for sure. Uh, and uh, just like in a, uh, Christina mentioned earlier today, uh, we're also very focused on you know, sending notes over to FastCase, all of our findings and like in you know, whatever we're uh, like in the seeing uh, with the data. Uh, put it all together because we all know how it is to uh, handle like in a huge amount of data. It is like in you know, not an easy, simple uh, process, right? So if we all can help out each other, uh, nothing better than that. So we will continue to analyze the data and any findings at all. Uh, so we will be compiling the list and we will be sending it over so it can be helpful uh, for everybody uh, else out there. So. That pretty much is the summary for whatever is uh, like in a, has happened at Justice Side and is going to happen for uh, at least the next uh, two quarterly updates. So, if we change and you know, if we're going to like do anything different, uh, we will obviously bring it up in the future uh, meetings that we're going to have. Uh, Vasu, are you keeping a um, snapshot of each quarter so that if need be, you can go back and compare the differences or are you simply overwriting your data store? Raw data is obviously there, but we mm -hmm. haven't uh, worked on in a systematic versioning uh, of any of it yet. Uh, but right now, yeah. definitely, like, you know, we do have the raw data and if we need to implement something, uh, we don't need to scramble to figure out where the data is, but we haven't worked on any of the versioning aspects of it yet. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Sarah for Cornell, please. Sure, um, and I will also, um, as Vasu did, um, begin with a thank you to um, to PRO, to FastCase, um, and to to Justy. I think I um, work for an organization that probably owes a, a big thank you to to everyone on this call. Um, so very much obliged. Um, this is a project that we had hoped to do for many years, and are are so excited to have been able to bring to the public. Um, our first release was lagged behind just as, um, and um, a big part of that had to do with um, being able to wait, knowing that uh, there was already um, a, a version that was available to the public uh, in order to make sure that we could have enough infrastructure that we would be able to support subsequent feature development. So a lot of the work of the initial release involved taking the XML that we were receiving and converting it into a format that was more usable um, and uh, more readily supported feature development. And so that that piece is done. We have been filing our quarterly releases um, in XML. Um, uh, our processed XML and uh, our processed HTML, um, which uh, has some has some differences um, beyond what we've done to the XML, so that we can we can retrieve and, and snapshot and compare um, as we need to. Um, Beyond that, there is a, a, a minimal feature set that we have been working with uh, for many years, and that is that is reflected um, in what we have published on the website. That includes a um, basic navigation references and uh, web accessibility compliance um, modifications to the to the HTML. Um, beyond that. Um, we have extracted metadata from the corpus and 
uh, are using that to prototype the next round of features. Um, to step back for a second, one of the things that LAI is, is, is able to do um, that we don't see as much of in the government, but is very familiar to um, all the legal publishers here is um, is to be able to cross the silos of the individual uh, legal corpora um, and provide some kind of fairly uniform experience. And so the metadata extraction that we have done so far, um, the first rounds of features that are um, supported by that are going to be ones that uh, facilitate traversal from the places on the existing website that are well known and receive a lot of traffic um, to the to the state regulations, um, which uh, which we think will be valuable to the users. Um, we have discovered in the process that each individual state has its own very special way of referring to federal statutes and regulations, and so our extraction isn't complete yet, um, but it's certainly um, shows a lot of promise in terms of making it very easy to see where a particular regulation has rippled out among the states. Um, beyond that, uh, upcoming, um, we have some work to do on um, taking the topic model metadata that we extracted um, and turning that into a, a, a search-based feature uh, that will facilitate uh, topical retrieval um, from, from the corpus as, as an alternative to citation-based retrieval. And um, beyond that, uh, I think the other big um, task ahead of us um, in the in the immediate future is to do a better job on internal reference regulation, which is another um, another task that involves a lot of um, just very nitpicky work, as I think everyone on the call uh, would would recognize. Um, uh, and um, and also on the agenda for the the next quarter is for us to do an evaluation of what we can feasibly accomplish in terms of definition extracting extraction and resolution. Um, longer term, we have bulk data um, ambitions, um, and we are at the point where we are looking at where to where it makes the most sense to draw the line in terms of balancing stability of the of, of what we're releasing um, with um, the availability of, of, of what we can release. Um, at, at the moment, um, what we have, we consider to be a lot more usable, at least to us, um, than, um, than what we're able to do um, with, the, with the raw feed. Um, but on the other hand, it may be worthwhile for um, for other developers who want to reuse um, reuse XML to be able to uh, count on there being less variation from release to release. Um, it, it would be, if you could send me a copy of some of your processed XML and HTML to look at. That would be very useful for me sure to thing. see what it looks like when it gets. Um, transformed. Yeah, bulk data is going to be hard um, to do. Uh, you'll you'll notice that I have not posted these archives up on the Internet Archive yet um, uh, for two reasons. One is it's unlikely that anybody that we don't know is going to be downloading it and processing it and trying to stand up the regs. Um, and so, you know, it's just not worth the hassle. Uh, the other is I'm not quite sure it's it's what we want to be releasing. And, and I think kind of a one year goal is going to be trying to understand how we make our bulk data available for other people that we don't know to be able to ingest and work with and potentially even giving back to the states because remember that's one of our goals here um okay um so I had three um, very quick updates on, uh, there's three uh, other vendors that are not here at the table today uh, that we have contracts with. Uh, we are working with InnoData um, and uh, they are uh, 
OCR and double keying uh, a number of standards. This is related to our India work. Um, however, they may also be be working on on some of our, our U.S. materials. Um, InnoData is a company, uh, so our team is based out of uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, they've done good work. Uh, they have been translating the Indian Roads Congress standards um, from OCR scans into pretty clueful HTML. Um, downstream from that, we are translating those HTML files into nine different Indian languages using Google's um, neural network-based uh, machine translation. Um, and so that, that's not directly related to our work here. Uh, Digital Divide Data is a, uh, a B Corp, a, a socially minded corporation. Uh, we have a team in Laos that has chewed through um, close to a thousand. Um, so in the <laughs> Code of Federal Regulations, if you're trying to set a table, into the CFR, um, you don't mark it up in XML, you put a GIF file up. Um, and so there were approximately a thousand GIF files that were actually tables. And what these folks have done is gone through those, uh, double keyed them, did a QA process, uh, made them accessible HTML, and those are now actually incorporated into the Code of Federal Regulations. Uh, they are now beginning to work on our state images. So we have approximately 2,000 tables that we have identified, um, and they're beginning the process of chewing through those. Uh, we are going to push those back upstream to FastCase um, if you want to use those. So instead of having a GIF file, you'll have actual HTML you can work with. Um, and we're going to need to figure out a procedure for making sure you, you get all those. Uh, the third vendor is Point B, uh, based out of Oregon. Point B Studio does much higher end work, and that is reverse engineering um, uh, real diagrams into SVG, uh, taking mathematical formulas and turning them into math ML. And again, as they begin start to work on the state codes. They've been focused on the federal level up till now. Uh, we're going to try to push some of that material upstream as well. So that's where we are on state regulations. Uh, we have another team based out of Unicorp. Um, uh, they're out of Mangalore and, um, and California. And what they are doing, which is extremely valuable, is so every month what I do is I, um, uh, I, I subscribe to six different state codes, um, as in the official code of Georgia annotated. We're talking legislative codes here. We have Mississippi, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, Colorado in addition. Um, and what they are doing is every time I get a CD, I export every title to an RTF file. The RTF file loses all the links, loses all the structure. There's no indented lists. There's no cross links. There's nothing. Um, and they've written some very clever software that's able to turn that back into the kind of code we expect. So um, if someone from Unicorp could, could briefly present what you're doing. Sure. Um, thanks, Carl. Uh, firstly, excited to be a part of this uh, team here. Um, and thanks, Carl, for having Unicode, uh, you know, contribute to this project. We're pretty excited uh, to collaborate here. Um, can everybody see my screen here? You bet. Okay, perfect. Um, so like Carl said, um, the RTF files are uploaded to um, Internet Archive. Uh, we run them, we download them and run them through the text util uh, to get you know, some HTML output. Um, this output is then run through uh, the scripts that are uh, in this particular repository to generate the structured HTML. So uh, all the source code is here on this link. Um, and what we do is uh, for every state uh, that we have converted the state codes, we have created a separate repository. And uh, they are hosted as uh, GitHub pages. So here's uh, one for Georgia. All the releases come up here in the primary index file. So you can uh, basically browse through the release and uh, go through the specific titles here. Um, the same is done with Arkansas. Here. And uh, every quarter when uh, Carl uploads new RTF files, um, the idea is that uh, we'll pretty much um, uh, 
you know download them and run run them through this and uh, basically do a new release of uh, that particular state the roadmap that we have for um, the for the next quarter is we have the these four states coming up if you could make uh, Tennessee also, number two, I'm sorry, uh, we actually have representation in Tennessee. So if you can move that up to after Mississippi. Thanks. We are currently working on Mississippi and yeah, you can pick this up. Okay. A anything else, Thank Prashant? Or? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. Okay. No, that's very useful. Um, uh, uh, we have lawyers in Mississippi and Tennessee as well. Um, as you may have seen, I have sent a letter to the Arkansas Code Revision Commission uh, after um, a presentation was given to them by their vendors saying that the Georgia decision did not impact Arkansas. Uh, I sent them a letter and respectfully disagreed with my colleagues from, from industry, that's their vendor, but also said, here's all your HTML uh, for your code. Uh, if we can do anything to help you and work with you, uh, we would we would appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I'm waiting, you know, now that everybody's coming back to work in January, I'm going to attempt to see if perhaps the Arkansas Code Revision Commission would like a brief presentation from me about what it is we're doing uh, so that they can understand the implications of doing this. Um, we have one more group on the line, which is uh, Sushant Sinha uh, from Indian Kanoon. Uh, we're doing a lot of work in India. We have the ultimate collection of Indian gazettes, um, which are the equivalent of the federal register and the equivalent state registers. Um, getting a lot of hits. It's searchable in all the Indian languages. So if, if Sushant, if you could briefly explain what it is uh, you're doing, in particular your transformation of the gazettes into um, XML into Indian Kanoon, that would be useful. Past year I was both, I mean, I, I run Indian Kanoon in India. It's a full search repository of court judgments and laws in India. And uh, last year I was working with Carl on a couple of things. One was aggregating all the gazettes of all the states and this union. And second part was actually to make them fully searchable in Indian languages. So we zeroed down on the, on the Google OCR API and we hooked it up with the uh, archive uh, Abbey uh, output. So you can actually search the full Indian gazettes in, full, in all the Indian languages uh, on the internet archive. So we have almost digitized uh, uh, close to half a million gazettes and books. Uh, almost uh, 6 million pages till now. Uh, the work is still ongoing in some ways, some books and other stuff needs to be done. And uh, uh, the second part was we also wanted to have more structural output of the, uh, of the gazettes. So there are gazettes which are two column gazettes. There are tables in the gazettes. So we want to automatically figure those out. So we are also doing a software uh, to help that, to convert directly from a uh, PDF file to uh, HTML, which is actually well-structured, uh, with, of course, uh, some human uh, intervention, but uh, that should be minimized as much as possible. So that is something I will be working closely with Carl in Q1 uh, on getting that done so that we can take a gazette from India and convert it to, to HTML. And then we also move forward in the year going forward to actually convert it into a Koma Natoso format. So I actually run a website for uh, all the Koma Natoso formatted Indian laws. So the idea is to update all the laws and keep adding the new mm, laws on the website using this tool. Of course, with some human efforts that whatever is required. The other small bits I worked with um, Carl was on the gen automatically generating the um, um, subtitles from a video. So that is uh, one that also hooks up to the to the Google API for speech recognition, and also uh, I worked on translating it into Indian languages, translating subtitles into various Indian languages. So you can there is a tool we have released 
which you can just run and convert all your subtitles into as many Indian languages as you want. Of course, all that also uses the Google API. So that's just a bridge, really, to do the things. So, so, so there's two bigger pictures in Sushant's work. Um, all his code is general purpose. So he, um, we needed to run optical character recognition in Indian languages on the gazettes, uh, but that code has also been applied to several hundred thousand books on the Internet Archive. And so we're, we're systematically working our way through all the Tamil books, all the Kannada books, all the Malayalam books, and making them all searchable. Um, his code for machine language translation um, works on subtitles. It works on HTML. So we have been translating Indian Roads Congress standards into Indian languages. Um, and then that software also permits crowdsourcing for better translations. So if you don't like the way this word was translated into that language, you can upload a glossary file and the neural network then adjusts itself. And so we're attempting to use that code on Indian standards and roads and things like that. Uh, the work on the gazettes has actually <clears throat> got a much bigger picture. Uh, there was recently a letter sent into the Ministry of Law and Justice, and I was actually honored to be the only foreigner signing, uh, but a whole bunch of Indian lawyers signed. And they essentially, it's the equivalent of what happened in the United States during the Panama hot oil cases, in which it turns out in India, a lot of people um, don't know what the current state of the law is. And by people, I mean judges and lawyers, because a regulation is promulgated, it's amended, it's amended, it's amended. And at the end of the day, you really have no idea what the actual current status is. Um, our Gazette database is actually being queried by lawyers in actual court cases in order to try to understand uh, what it is uh, that the current status is of a regulation. And so the broader push here is a more systematic process of administrative law. Um, and we're doing it the way we always do things, which is showing by doing. So one of uh, Sushant's main goals this year is going to be extracting content from the official gazettes, turning those into XML, and being able to compare those to the actual regulations and laws and, and other, um, other things that are out there. So that, that's kind of the long-term play there. Um, I have one more brief update, and then I, I, we can turn this over to general discussion. Uh, David Halpern is on the line. David is of counsel to Public Resource, has worked with me for many years since I, I started um, Public Resource. So I mentioned that we have sent a letter to Arkansas saying, hey, we've got the Code Revision Commission you know, annotated uh, um, codes available. Can we do anything to work with you and help you? Uh, we have representation in Mississippi, and we are beginning the process of trying to understand what it is we can do in Mississippi, which asserts copyright over um, their laws and their regulations. If you go to the Secretary of State site, it says right there, the laws of Mississippi are copyrighted by the state of Mississippi. Um, I'm not sure that that conforms to our understanding of the common law. Um, we are working with the Vanderbilt um, Clinic in Tennessee, um, and we will begin um, starting this month to work with them as to what is it we can do with the Tennessee code. Uh, the firm of Cooley, uh, one of the leading Silicon Valley law firms, now represents us, and we have sent Public Records Act requests to the state of California. We asked for a copy of the California Code of Regulations in XML. Uh, we also sent a similar letter to the Building Standards Commission because they've carved out the building codes, and we've done the same thing. Uh, our intent is to move forward uh, with the possibility of a declaratory relief action. Uh, the California Constitution um, enshrined the Public Records Act. So in California, our Public Records Act is actually a result of a, of a proposition, of, of a vote by the people which led to a constitutional amendment, which then mandated that the legislature promulgate the Public Records Act as we know it today. So it is deeply constitutionally based. Um, 
In Washington, we have two things going on. Uh, I am leading a task force with a number of groups, including the Wikipedia, um, including the Internet Archive, EFF, a number of commercial uh, players, to look at the Open Courts Act and potentially uh, recommend a different way of approaching the problem. Um, as currently implemented, the Open Courts Act would uh, not make PACER free for five years, and during those five years would levy an increase surcharges on so-called power users and at the end of five years it wouldn't be free because anyone who wants all of PACER would have to pay big bucks and we don't think that's a good situation. Uh, the other thing that David and I are examining is a potential petition to the Office of the Federal Register to the uh, Office of Management and Budget um, suggesting that perhaps the Code of Federal Regulations could be presented in a better format that it could be accessible to the visual impaired as required by U.S. law, uh, that perhaps in, instead of incorporating by reference, we simply incorporate, right, so that right now we have estimated 30 percent of the Code of Federal Regulations is not accessible because they're, they're documents that are incorporated by reference and you can only get them from private parties. Um, so that that's a brief overview of our legal effort. Uh, we're going to base the legal effort on top of the technical effort. And so the goal here is to be able to go to the states and say, hi, we're not just simply walking around here saying you're doing a bad job. We're here to help you. We, we have put this stuff online. We have people actually using this stuff. We understand what we're doing. What can we do to help you do a better job of promulgating the law? So that, that's the overall. Um, I'd like to turn it over for general discussion. Um, uh, we've got several issues. Uh, at some point, we need to make bulk data available. Um, I know everybody wants to do time travel, right? Be able to show red lines. Um, and then all sorts of relevance and keywords and, and things like that are, are obviously things that could be extracted out of this material. So let me, let me turn it over for general discussion. Does anyone have um, any comments? Surely there's got to be at least one. Um, bulk data, Sarah, when do you think we, we should be aiming to make bulk data available? Do you have any indication as to where that might be on the timeline? I think the answer to that uh, depends on the preferences of the consumers of the bulk data, um, honestly. And so I think we need to do, a, our next step is to do more in-depth discussions with the people who will be using it um, to see what their, what their preferences and requirements are. Um, as it stands, there. The, the regulations are um, packaged up in a way that could be reused um, mm -hmm. by lots of people. It's just that um, the features that make it um, a little bit easier to work with um, are a work in progress. And there is a balance between where, where we are in terms of that feature development and um, uh, making the product more stable um, and making making the bulk data available. And so I don't, I don't think it's really wise to set a timeline on it um, without having a little bit more um, from the point of view of people who are going to reuse it. Um, I think the, okay. the other piece of it is that, that we're probably going to look at where the starting point for bulk data might want to be given the amazing QA effort that has gone into the last couple of releases um, and all of the improvements in the source text um, that, that have been made. So that's, that's one that I think within this group, um, we'd be wise to step through a little bit more um, so that we can think about the best starting point um, for, for that public release. Do we have any indication who a downstream user might be? I, I, I know with the Arkansas legislative code, we have an app developer in Arkansas that's digesting what Unicorn did and is coming up with a, a Mac app. Do we do we have potential users um, in in our sites, or are we simply speculating at this point? 
Like, I was wondering if we have people in our sites, if we can drag them into the conversation, that might be useful. We've talked to a number of people who have asked us for APIs in the past. Um, I don't see that being significantly different, I, 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 except in so far as there are probably users at individual state levels um, that it would be a mistake for us to proceed without consulting. Um, so Waldo Jackwith um, is at Georgetown now and is uh, very heavily focused on helping states um, do a better job. Uh, he was the uh, person who came up with the state's decoded format that was used in Virginia and other places. Um, it sounds like maybe um, Waldo, Sarah, myself, maybe Sushant could begin an initial discussion. One of the questions I'd like to, to think about is whether your current intermediate format, your current XML and HTML, might form the basis of an interim bulk distribution maybe later this year. And bringing in the users to work with us to understand how that might be transformed in a way that would make sense. Um, as you said, you know, we need to keep looking upstream and, you know, understanding what it is we're doing different from what FastCase gives us. Um, and so we, we definitely want to consider that. It's not out of the question. We simply take the FastCase releases and, and you know, throw them out. But I, I think our downstream users are going to want a little bit more, uh, particularly if all you're doing is, is putting one state up, right? If you're not willing to go through and do the whole shebang if all you want to do is quickly you know build an iphone app for example for your state regs um it, it would be important to understand what those folks do so let, let's form a working group uh anyone else who wants to participate in that discussion is welcome to um i i'm dragging sushant in simply because he is very familiar with a lot of the xml work that needs to be done like you he's had to really go through a lot of that stuff um so he, he can help us out on on some of those issues i had a quick question on that i mean is there any write-up on how the whole feed comes in and how it is processed and uh, how the final output is generated? No, no, but we do have a DTD for the um, the XML that we receive. I'm more than happy to share the dumps with you. You can look at it yeah. um, and see what they're like. Uh, there is an issue of naming. Uh, to me, it's, it's uh, unclear. If you have a citation to a state reg, how you can guess what the URL is going to be, right? The the mapping between an actual citation and what tend to be very long file names um, is not something that without a lookup table, I think I would be able to do that mapping. One of my goals is always to be able to take an external document, right, that, that is not in, in that world, but happens to cite in, in our case, state regulations, and be able to construct pointers to those without having to go in and look each one up. Um, so one of the things we love about Cornell is that if you have a US code citation in whatever it is, law paper, uh, you can, without looking at, at Cornell, you can construct a pointer to that section of the US code. Um, and I think it's going to be important with state regs, uh, particularly if lawyers begin using our work, that we are able to go from a citation to a URL at some point. And so I think that's that's an issue um, with the bulk stuff. And we can provide more documentation on where we've gotten in that in that process as well, if if that is uh, of yes. use. Others. Yeah, our, our goal, Sushant, in uh, 2020 was, uh, first of all, just to get through the damn year, um, but it was also to uh, get this stuff up and running quickly. Um, and so the goal was rather than sit down and examine everything we have, fix it, get it ready, I, I asked Justia to get it up as quickly as they can, and I asked Sarah if she could at least stand the regs up uh, for all 50 states um, You know, by the end of the year. Uh, that means we can walk into 2021 and, and you know, kind of roll up our sleeves and say, okay, what do we got to do? Um, remember, we have two dumps so far out of 60, right? We have 58 more quarterly dumps coming. Um, so we're, we, we have a long roadmap here of, of, do I have my numbers right? Um, no, I'm sorry. We have 20 dumps total. Um, we have two already and we have another 18 coming, right? Four per year. 
And, and our goal is, you know, this year, make it better. Uh, but we don't have to solve every problem this year. We just need to be on a roadmap that over the next couple of years is turning this into something that really is production ready. And hopefully with downstream users, I, I want to see iPhone apps. I, I want to see states potentially working with our material. I would love to donate their diagrams back to them as SVG and MathML and HTML um, and see them begin to use them on their websites. So I, I think this year is when we come up with that strategy and come up with the, the working groups and try to understand how we can systematically over the next few years make this happen. Uh, we have a real luxury, which is unusual in our nonprofit world of being able to plan ahead for a few years. And so I, I want us to take advantage of that luxury and see if we can do something really top notch, professional grade and really like fix these regs and make them better. Carl, can I, can I uh, make a comment? Yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to uh, Dan and Vasu and the Justia team, uh, Sarah and Craig and the Cornell team for all of the comments uh, and additional QA on these regs. Uh, the, the output looks very consistent when we deliver it, but we're <laughs> harvesting it from like, you know, a million different unstandard standards uh, you know, the, the source materials, I think, because of their obscurity are in terrible shape. The uh, missing images is one example of it, but like, you know, multiple code sections with the same citations or, you know, places where the codes are out of order. Uh, we are uh, culminating a multi-year process to kind of get these online, including converting some of the regulations from paper and uh, the the output, although it looks very homogenous and clean as we're delivering it, um, is from a million different formats. So uh, Rachel Johns, Sean Tate on our team, Rupesh Barugu, Nina Jack, and others have done like a mountain of QA on it, but it's boiling the ocean. I mean, there's going to be a million issues. And as those of you who have worked with large volumes of data before, no, um, to, to really get this in a great workable format is going to take a few iterations. So I really appreciate the hard work you guys have put into it, the very detailed work. And I think your patience also with us as we really try to get this unruly mass of regulations into a stable, consistent, predictable format. So thank you. Well, and thank you, Ed, for being willing to do this, um, because this is really a big step forward, I believe, um, is, is getting regulations of all 50 states much more broadly available than they were um, is no different than the earlier efforts to, you know, make appellate courts and the U.S. code and materials of that sort available. Um, it's generating a tremendous amount of goodwill among people we care about, such as law librarians and working lawyers. So um, it's it's having an impact, the work that you folks are doing. It's, it's going to make a difference. We always appreciate your leadership in it too, Carl. My pleasure. Um, <laughs> all right. Anything else? I would then uh, suggest that we terminate this meeting. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, do we want monthly meetings or do we want quarterly meetings? Uh, any indication there? I, I can do this offline if you want, but anyone have any preferences? Meet more often, less often? One thing I might add is, uh, at least at the outset, um, quarterly with the deliveries might make good sense a good chance to debrief after we deliver them. And if people feel like we need to have more often, more uh, frequent meetings, we can certainly do that. Okay, so maybe quarterly, um, maybe, you know, roughly 30 days after the delivery, so people have had time to to ingest it, and we can go over the issues we found and give you some early feedback on what it is we'd like to see in the next delivery. Um, that makes sense. Okay. Or any works for just yeah, folks. Got it. I, I know we all have too many Zoom meetings in our life, so I, I don't want to <laughs> overburden us with these things. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate your time. Uh, this first meeting of the Code Improvement Commission is, is uh, gaveled out. Thank you for your time. Our work at Public Resource is made possible by a generous grant from Arcadia. Arcadia a charitable fund of Lisbeth Rousing and Peter Baldwin.
Additional support provided by contributions from citizens like you. Thank you for your support. Public Resource is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation with headquarters in the state of California and dedicated to the principle that access to knowledge is a human right.